Hi, in this video we're going into part two of working with action filters in ASP. At the end of the last video, we created this private message that only a logged in user can see. However, it's not quite set up correctly because I have not logged in yet and if I type in private, I can still see the message. So now we're going to implement the filter to block people so that they can't see this until they've logged in. So returning here to this controller called the login controller, you can see the method that we've programmed called onPrivateURL. And it's only supposed to be viewed by people who are logged in. So to create this filter, I'm going to put in a square bracket just before the public action result line. And now I'm going to call it custom authorization. And the brackets are an indication to say that this is an attribute. Now the attribute obviously doesn't exist yet and so I get a red line error. So I'm going to click on the item and then choose the suggestion that says let's create a new attribute in a separate file. And so we should see custom authorization attribute in a new file. When I open up this new attribute I can see that it has something called a, it's implementing a class called attribute. I'm going to delete that and change it to a specific one called a filter attribute. And as you can see, I need to include the system uh, web.mvc file to make this work. Secondly, this uh, authorization attribute must implement a new interface. So I'm going to put in the word I authorization filter. And as you can see, it says you must implement something in this interface. And so when I choose implement it, I get a new method called on authorization, and I get an important parameter called filter context. That filter context can be, can be used to find out what's happened in other pages on your application. The first thing I want to do is get an authorization from the application. Did the user log in correctly? And so to check that, I'm going to need this thing called the security service. So I'll implement a new instance of security service, and of course that has to be implemented, so I have to import it from our uh, business service folder. Next I want to obtain the authorization status of the user. So this is going to be a Boolean result. And it comes from security service dot authenticate. Now as you can see, authenticate is requiring something as a parameter. And the requirement is we need to have a user object. So I can put in the word user, but you can see I don't have a value for the user yet. So now I need to go get a user. So I need to use the uh, class called user model, which was defined in a previous activity. And uh, right now I'm going to set it to null just because I don't know where I'm going to get the user from. But I need to show that I import this from the folder called activity 3 models. So now here's the magic of this uh, variable called filter context. I can set filter context dot and I get a, a value called HTTP context and then from there I can grab something called the session. Now the session is a variable that can be set and it can be cleared. It's one way to pass information from one page to another. So your session variables are in place as long as you're logged in. Now we've got ourselves a problem It says you're expecting to get user from the session. So user could be a string, it could be a number, and we need to cast it as what we expect that value to be. And I expect it to be a user model class. So we've got ourselves here a user that is stored in the session. Well, we think it's stored in the session. Obviously it's not stored in the session yet until we actually put it there. So the next step is to put it there. So we need to return to the uh, login controller to make this work. So in the login controller, if we have a successful login, we can set the session to be that user. So we've got ourselves a, um, a simple one line item that says, take this user session and save it. Now, if it is not a successful login, let's take session and clear it. So that way we remove any previous logins. So now once we have a success or failure variable, we can now go and do some actions based on that. 
So if there is a success, we'll do one thing, and if it's not successful, we'll do another. So if it is successful, that means that the person has been logged in. So if we have a successful login, then we need to put some information in this section called if success. Now in this case, we don't want to do anything. The person is in, has been logged in successfully, and so let's just let the controller events continue as normal. So it should display the secure message. Now the filter effectiveness comes in here in the else statement. So if they have not successfully logged in, then we need to redirect them. So we set that by this method. We say filter context.result equals, and then we'll create a new redirection command or a renew direct and redirection attribute. And we want to put in here the string parameter of the URL where we want to go. So we're going to send them to the login URL. We could have sent them to another message that said, sorry, you're not authorized to see this page. But for this case, it's just easier to send them to login. All right, let's test this application out. So I'm going to run the application, and then I'm going to type in the same private URL that I did before. Now, I have a crash. It says, uh, you tried to do an authorization, and user dot, or username was a null value. And so, obviously, there is nothing in the uh, user session yet, and so it, it, it says you can't authorize a non-event. You can't authorize a null. So I need to modify my code a little bit. Okay, so we want to avoid this uh, application error when we have a null user object. So let's first of all set success to be set to false by uh, default. And then let's check to see if the user is not equal to null. If it is not equal to null, then go ahead and run the, the security service authenticate method. And let's return that and save it in the success variable. So success will now switch to true if the security service authentication comes back as a positive. And then, of course, if it's still not uh, positive, it'll just remain a false. Now we can continue on after that to reroute the person if they're not logged in. All right, let's launch the application again and give it another try. So I'm going to go to the default uh, page and then add the private URL. So you can see that private URL doesn't succeed. I'm going to try it again and it automatically reroutes me now to the login page. Well, let's go ahead and choose a login. So I'm going to pick max and password one, which is a valid user, and log in. I have a successful login. So now let's try to go to the private page again, and hopefully we'll get something that says private information here. Only a logged in user should be able to see this message. So this action filter, this custom filter, shows you how to check to see if a person is logged in or not, and then display the secure content. And so obviously the secure content is meaningless here, but you can extend this uh, principle and this example to other applications that you're building with ASP.NET. So thanks for watching.